what Stuart embodied was a, was a, a man who, who believed and, and uh, lived what he believed. And he, he lived simply, he gave more than he took, and he appreciated beauty in, uh, in the world and tried to convey that to as many as he could. He was more than just the person that gave me the dogs and trained me. He became uh, my mentor and uh, also a very, very close friend. There are many, many stories about the, the men that came to match these mountains. But when we wished for and needed a woman to match the mountains, the goddess sent Isabel, I think. She is a strong, natural force, a strong, loving woman, um, as strong and loving in her own way and as Stuart was in his. I know that one of the great gifts that my family, my parents, gave this community was their willingness to share their wisdom uh, always with others, uh, whether they were people who were working here or people who came through here or someone would come into the gallery and buy a piece of wood and my father was willing to sit down with him and tell him all of you know the incredible history of this piece of wood. Um, they, they gave immensely of the wisdom uh, and consciousness that they had uh, to others. When Walter Pepke asked the Mesas to move to Aspen from Boulder, Colorado in 1947, it's doubtful he was aware of what Aspen was about to receive. What Pepke soon discovered was that a world-class dog sledding operation was only a tiny portion of what the Mesas would generously give to Aspen in the years to come. I mean, my father consciously made the decision that he was going to lead his own life. He was not going to go work for corporate America or even a little floral shop in Boulder in, in 1949. He wanted to carve out his own life based on what he thought was important. And so he set about trying to do that. Stewart had directed the Arctic dog sled program at Camp Hale during World War II. And when the war ended, he adopted several of the Army's top dogs. These dogs initially brought Stuart, Isabel, and their children to Aspen. A passion for the Aspen area compelled them to stay. In turn, the Mesas convinced friends, like longtime Aspenite and environmentalist Bob Lewis, to join them here. I asked Stuart what it would be like to live at Aspen. Uh, and, and he said, you know, if you can possibly swing it, he says, it's the best place on earth. The upper Castle Creek Valley is home to Toklat, a name which translates as Glacial Valley. And it's been the headquarters to the Mesa's activities for over 50 years, and a testament to the power of stewardship. The meadows of the upper Castle Creek Valley today are a beautiful combination of grasses and wildflowers. And, and it's interesting to remember that back at the turn of the century and, and towards the middle part of the century, those uh, meadows were heavily grazed by livestock and a lot of Stuart's efforts from the 40s on were towards reclaiming those meadows and bringing the wildflowers back in and getting the native grasses reestablished. The best use of this valley is its own use as a high aquifer, as a gene pool. It's its own reason for being. And in so being, it's useful to us. Bill and June Kirkwood came to Toklat in the early 1950s to work with their friends. I had few mentors in my life. Actually, most of my uh, later life was spent in the senior management. You don't get too many mentors in senior management, but I think one of the reasons I was successful in senior management was because Stuart Mace was my mentor when I was in my 20s. While Bill was working with Stuart and the dogs, Isabel was handling the enormous tasks of running a successful lodge cooking for dozens and raising her family. June, needless to say, was a welcome addition, and the Kirkwoods could easily see that Mrs. Mace had a quiet power all her own. And for a woman to, to work in that type of environment for all those years uh, and, uh, and support everything that he did, uh, was a very, very remarkable person. Besides running Toklat and raising their children, there came another addition to this busy family's rustic life, Hollywood. The Quaker Oats Company presents Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police with Yukon King, 
swiftest and strongest lead dog, breaking the trail in the relentless pursuit of lawbreakers in the wild days of the Yukon. The dogs became instant celebrities when they were featured on Sergeant Preston in the 1950s, and the Castle Creek Valley became a magical winter wonderland for television viewers across the country. The Mesa's dogs even provided inspiration for selling cereal. Sugar pop, sugar pop. Ruff, ruff, ruff. Sugar pop, sugar pop. Ruff, ruff, ruff. Hollywood came to Toklat, and Stewart and the dogs went to Hollywood while filming the Paramount feature film Three Redheads from Seattle. Through the years, Toklat went through many transformations. What first started as a lodge and dog sledding business evolved into not one, but two restaurants in town. Today's Hickory House and Chart House both housed the Mesa's Toklat restaurants. Isabel infused her philosophy into every meal. Her natural cooking is legendary. Her respect for its proper use, unforgettable. Twenty years ago, soon after we moved to Aspen, the Maces invited us to Toklat for dinner. When it came time to serve ourselves dinner, and there was a young man standing in front of me who had just started working at Toklat, and he piled his plate very high. When he was reaching again to balance more food on his plate, Isabel firmly reached over and very quietly put her hand on top of his and said, Be careful what you take. We don't waste food here. So much of Isabel's spirit and her grounded nature came, and her strength came out in that one simple statement. It required no more explanation than that. Good, 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 good. Dog sled driving requires a tremendous amount of physical exertion. And after years of hands-on work, Stewart began thinking of phasing the dogs out of Toklat's operation. But because of his love of the dogs, he was having a difficult time deciding how to do so. When one of Stewart's protégés, a young dog sled driver named Dan McEachin, expressed his passion for the dogs and sledding, Stewart had a solution. There was, there was no money exchanged. Uh, it was a gift but I had, to, I had to earn it. And uh, I don't even think we even shook hands. We, there was never a contract uh, drawn up or anything like that. But the deal was I had to move from Toklat. I had to change the name, and I had to take good care of the dogs. And if either side didn't think the deal was going to work, they could say, that's it. And that the agreement was for 10 years. And I've, had, I've owned the dogs now for 25, and so I think I've proven myself. Dan changed the name from Toklat to Krablunik, a name he took from one of Stewart's lead dogs. This fellow's name is Krablunik. See they, the big white eyebrows? Well, the word Krablunik in Eskimo means white eyebrows, therefore means white man, because the first men to make contact with the Eskimos were the Norsemen who had the big bushy white eyebrows and if if you ever met Stuart you would he had those very same eyebrows so people thought I named the business after him and quite honestly it was that certainly was part of it with the dogs in capable hands and the mace children grown the maces developed new ways to express their unique philosophies Stuart and Isabel worked with the Aspen Historical Society to restore the ghost town of Ashcroft. And with Stuart's love of painting, woodworking, and photography, Toklat became an art gallery, reflecting the Mesa's interest in bringing handcrafted arts to the public eye. With Isabel's extensive knowledge in food, Stuart and Isabel started Malachite, a small farm school in southern Colorado which teaches sustainable agriculture. 
And Stewart, along with Elizabeth Pepke, Bob Lewis, and others, became a founder of ACES, the Aspen Center for Environmental Studies. The accomplishments of this truly amazing couple are immeasurable. And so too is the genuine and enduring love that is felt for Stuart and Isabel Mace. From their family, to the friends they've made, to the animals they've lived with, and to the Castle Creek Valley that will feel the presence of Toklat forever. Do you know how to speak to the land, my brother? Do you listen to what it tells you? Can you take from it no more than what you need? Can you keep its secrets to yourself? Sell the land, my brother? You might as well sell the sun and the moon and the stars. <laughs>